So, the question is, what is Half-Life Alex? And where is Half-Life 3? Why is Half-Life Alex only available on VR? And where the hell is Half-Life 3? Is Half-Life Alex worth getting VR for? And why are Valve terrified of making Half-Life 3? Here to answer all those questions with me, Gareth Evans, is Mr. Henry, where the hell is Half-Life 3 Cooper? Well, Half-Life 3 may not be a reality, but the future of Half-Life is in virtual reality. The Half-Life franchise is still alive albeit only half half, half a leaf. life yeah half a life these jokes really aren't, aren't going anywhere <laughs> what is half-life alex it's a half-life game that's vr that's basically the fundamentals you need to get in your head it was unveiled on thursday evening uh, and the trailer goes on for about a minute and it looks pretty pretty good like it's re really great graphics there's like finger tracking and everything and it could well be the next big thing for vr all the visuals the locations the environments and the gameplay all look solid full of little references to the old half life like recognizable things like head crabs. Everyone remembers head crabs. Yeah. Uh, the game is meant to feature plenty of exploration, combat, and puzzles, and a brand new story set in between Half Life 1 and Half Life 2, and it will star the supporting character from those games, Alex Vance, as the main character. The game is going to come out in March 2020, so that month just got a whole lot busier because other releases in that month are Final Fantasy VII Remake on March the 3rd, March 13th we get Neo 2, March 20th we get Animal Crossing New Horizons and Doom Eternal, and then sometime in March, Half-Life Alex is coming out. And then, don't forget, in April, there's Cyberpunk. So it's going to be a busy opening to the year. <laughs> yeah, save your money this Christmas because uh, March is the time where your wallet will be hurting. So the general synopsis from a blog post about the game reads, Set between the events of Half-Life and Half-Life 2, Alex Vance and her father, Eli, mount an early resistance to the Combine's brutal occupation of Earth. The loss of the Seven Hour War is still fresh in the shadow of a rising Combine fortress known as the Citadel. Residents of City 17 learn to live under the rule of their invaders. But among this scattered population are two of the Earth's most resourceful scientists, Dr. Eli Vance and his daughter Alex, the founders of a fledgling resistance. Well done for reading all the Inception trailer noises. You forgot to say this summer. This summer to a theater near you. There you go. That's that's the initial reaction to it. It does look great, to be honest. And I think that a lot of the response from people who've seen it expected something Half Life, and it was like, oh yeah, come on then. What is this new Half Life VR thing that you've got? Let's take a look. And then their eyes just popped out of their heads when they started seeing all the old references, all the visuals, the environments, and everything that looks so beautiful. It's like, well, it's hard to be upset with something that looks so damn good and ticks so many boxes. Yeah. I'm not even a big Half-Life fan, but it's full of visual cues that even I recognize. And I'm like, oh, you know what? This could be something special. So let's talk specifically about the price and the platform. So Half-Life Alex is compatible with any VR headset that runs off of your gaming PC, uh, which includes Oculus Quest, if it's plugged into your PC via the link cable, the HTC Vive, Windows mixed reality, other Oculus devices, and so on. No PSVR unlucky scrubs, was the quote here directly from uh, Valve. <laughs> <laughs> But you got to give Valve credit for not making it a Valve Index exclusive. Valve are making their own VR hardware now called the Valve Index. For those of you who don't know, they could have easily done that and made it exclusive to that hardware to try and sell more of that hardware. But they didn't. Yeah. They want to make, make it open to anybody who can physically run it because it won't run on PlayStation, probably because of the hardware is not sufficient. You need a beefy PC to run this thing. Surely making it an exclusive couldn't even have been an option for them because then they would have been massive hypocrites given all of the exclusivity drama that goes on between them and uh, the Epic Store. That is a good point. There was a section in the trailer which showed off individual finger movements, uh, which implies that the game will support finger tracking, which is another level of immersion for VR, and it's the next like big thing in VR. HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift currently have to use like the trigger buttons and the thumb buttons to operate your fingers. However, the Valve Index does have finger tracking technology built in, so the best experience in this game, this will be like the first full game to support the finger tracking technology, yeah, so the best experience you will get on the Valve Index, which is quite exciting. Yeah, that's a cool USP that not many other things are doing. I think the Oculus Quest is meant to be getting that feature coming next year, but that's not its big push. It is coming next year. The Oculus Quest will work without controllers. The uh, Valve Index works with controller in your hand. It's like kind of kind of strapped to your hand, and you can operate. You can open your hand, and the and the, sh and the controller won't drop out of your hand because it's strapped to it. But you can operate your fingers. That's how the Valve Index works. Whereas the Oculus Quest fingerless technology or finger tracking technology
technology will work without controllers whatsoever and we'll just we'll just track your fingers in space in front of you without any controllers which is which is good but that will only work sometime next year and question marks over that of how well that will work at all because it will rely on the headsets cameras to track your fingers which if you put one hand behind the other it's gonna yeah. be hard for it to track that but anyway um back to the valve index it's only gonna set you back 919 pounds henry oh bargain but if, if you were put off by that you do get half-life alex for free with the bundle so uh yeah, yeah that's nice but you need also need a beefy pc on top of that which so uh, more than double yeah. the price of that if you want Obviously, to be able to do yeah, it so. yeah yeah the valve index isn't enough to run it yeah you do need the pc you can pick up up oculus rift or oculus quest or hd vive hd vive for currently around 400 pounds although the windows mixed reality vr unit is 225 pounds i've got right now i've never i've got no experience with that so i don't know yeah apparently i just gave one. it a quick google and those are the numbers that came up so there are other options for you if you want to think about it but obviously the valve index is going to be the big one that they're really promoting for it another notable fact is that you you will get the game free even if you only own the index controllers rather than the full valve index vr kit now the valve index controllers work with the hdc vive and the hdc vive pro but separately they're 260 pounds just for them controllers the finger tracking controllers i would say the best option for people who want to invest in vr at the time being is probably buy the oculus quest because you can link that to your pc now so you can it's a standalone unit that you can play with just inbuilt hardware yeah the graphic fidelity isn't great but you can plug it into your pc now and run the pc hardware for a beefy experience so it's the best of both worlds if you ask me we've got one in the office here and we vouch for it it's awesome yeah. 400 pounds you can it'll set you back to buy right now uh, plus the game itself is six, 60 dollars if you want to go down that route obviously you need a beefy pc as well and then there's the question of can you play it without vr just play it as a proper first person shooter but no essentially you can't as brought in by IGN who spoke with a Valve programmer called Robin Walker. Walker said that there's no way to translate it from VR without making gameplay sacrifices. So the quote is, it simply wouldn't be at all the same game with VR stripped away. It affects everything you do and how you do it, including a flat screen version of the game would have meant straddling both worlds and ultimately degrading and sacrificing the quality of the experience on both sides. Now I really like hearing that. That's maintaining their creative integrity and that is potentially at the expense of some sales and player enjoyment because some people just won't be able to play it. Some people just won't like VR, but it's much better to do one thing really, really well than two things half-assed. The trade-off will be that many people won't be able to play it but I think they're very much banking on this brand recognition of it being a Half-Life game to bring people in and maybe that'll be the, some people's first entry into VR if it's a massive success. So the question is why didn't they just make Half-Life 3? Why did why did they have to make this a VR game? Because people have been waiting patiently for like 12 years since the very last Half-Life game. Community has been screaming about it for ages so much so that the meme that Valve can't count to three is one of the yeah, biggest it, memes of the most longevity ever. Like it's Yeah, it's one of the first big internet cultures <laughs> culture things. Yeah. <laughs> that meme will never die. Uh, but according to Robin Walker again speaking to IGN, the project started out as a VR project and then it became a Half-Life game. So they were dabbling, trying to make a VR game because obviously they're making this hardware. They're dabbling with old assets from like Portal and Half-Life. Um, obviously Portal didn't work so well in VR because VR is notorious for making people motion sick and teleporting through um, holes in the wall to appear in a different gravitational pull and in different yeah. rooms. Probably not the best thing for a technology that makes you motion sick. However, Walker said, quote, it was really clear that Half-Life suited VR. We thought we had something play testers would finish in 15 minutes and instead players spent 45 minutes exploring it and didn't want to stop. Once they started dabbling with Half-Life in VR, they realized it made such a good fit with that franchise and then they continued it from there. It started out as a VR project yeah. and then morphed into Half-Life. It wasn't the other way around. They didn't decide on Half-Life and then decide to make it VR. So um, it's important to, to know that so that if people are frustrated there is no Half-Life 3 just like there was never going to be Half-Life 3 anyway at this point it was always going to be a VR title yeah it makes sense for them to be building all right we want we want to build a new VR experience all right what's our most popular franchise oh Half-Life all right we could do that and make guaranteed money from people who will definitely buy it because it's Half-Life or we can make a new franchise or build on a less popular one so it's just a no-brainer to make it like this and it doesn't completely rule out Half-Life 3 no exactly they have said um, something about Half-Life 
Half-Life, or, or they've implied that maybe Half-Life might be on the way. Valve's David Spera spoke to The Verge, who asked him if we should expect more from the Half-Life series in future, and he said the following, quote, yes. Half-Life 3 confirmed, baby! Uh, as simple as yes, yes, more Half-Life coming in future, he said. He didn't say specifically Half-Life 3. Um, although the prospect of making Half-Life 3 is, quote, a terrifyingly daunting prospect, according to Robin Walker again, who spoke with Jeff Keighley recently. Half-Life was just terrifying. Right. Sorry, Half-Life 3. Terrifyingly daunting prospect. Terrifyingly daunting prospect. Terrifyingly daunting prospect. And that video is on YouTube, an interview with the Valve devs working on Half-Life Alex. It's, it's worth a watch if, for those of you interested. Terrifyingly daunting prospect. Is that because of the expectation set by the community on Half-Life 3? People are just shitting themselves. They don't want to let people down. See, I'm, as I said up top, I'm not a big Half-Life fan, but I, I want to be in the world when Half-Life 3, if it ever does get announced, just so I can observe and watch how people react to it, because there is no way it can live up to the hype. It's just not possible. But in terms of what this game is, there's a big question over how big it is, especially because they're trying to make it this big, fully-fledged uh, VR thing, and charging a full AAA game price of $60. So it is described as, quote, a full-length virtual reality entry, and uh, Mr. Walker again says, this isn't a spin-off or a side story or anything of the sort. It's a full-scale campaign. Repeated playtest results indicate it's about the same length as Half-Life 2. As IGN reported, Half-Life 2, by most estimates, clocks in at around 13 to 15 hours, which obviously isn't as long as your a lot of modern games, but 13 to 15 hours in a VR space it's quite a lot of time. Yeah, and this and this is where it brings up the question, right? It's not obviously primarily not a Half-Life entry. It's a it should take more headlines for it being breaking new ground in VR. That's for sure. And this is my talking point here. I'm going to yeah. ask this question now. I'll ask it again in a moment. Is this the moment VR all waiting for? Hold, I'm saying that joke hold, all morning. Hold your thoughts there. I, I, I'm about to get to why that's an awesome question. Think about it this way: we currently have Fallout 4, Skyrim from Bethesda. No Man's Sky is now playable in VR, and we have games like Elite and. Subnautica, which count among the biggest VR experiences to date. But you can consider these all like tacked on VR integration to already developed games. VR was an afterthought to the development of these games. These games weren't specifically made for VR and use the technology itself in the gameplay. And up until now, VR has been developed primarily as like an experiment. Its developers have been experimenting with it, seeing what they can come up with. But Half-Life Alex is different, and this is why it might be the moment VR are all waiting for. Get it right? So, I'll carry on. It's the first game from a huge, beloved franchise being developed specifically for VR, right? The gameplay has been designed specifically for that technology. It's not a short tech demo of a game like many other games are, and because it's over 10 hours long, so it's one that you can get your teeth into, and it's not just a tacked-on version of VR. It features very high graphical quality, as we can see by the trailer, unlike many of the other VR titles out there. It's a franchise well-loved throughout the gaming community, developed by arguably some of the best developers out there and as a fan and owner of two VR units and the fact that I'm very very familiar with the types and quality of games that are currently on offer for VR I would argue that there's nothing quite like Half-Life Alex out there right now and we've said all along that VR just needs some great games specifically made for VR some huge games that people can get their teeth into and the platform will succeed or fail by the games that are made for the platform and like I said there's nothing out there like Half-Life Alex up until now there's nothing out there like that yeah the the closest thing to it, closest rival, would probably be something like PSVR's Blood and Truth, which is, you know, it's a full first-person shooter with a with a proper story and a reasonable budget. It's kind of like a heist, early Guy Ritchie movie. And that reviewed pretty well. It got an 80 on Metacritic, both critic and user. So that was quite popular. But again, I, it wasn't the big shake-up to the VR industry that uh, I think people kind of wanted it to be. So this Half-Life Alex could be that. Yeah, so that's the question, right? Is this the huge draw, that the catalyst, maybe, which will make VR take off in a big way? And I'll ask it again in case you missed my beautiful pun earlier. Is this the moment VR are all waiting for? And that's so good because it works on two levels, right? Is it the moment oh, VR are all waiting explain. for because <laughs> VR people are waiting for it and also Half-Life people are waiting for it too. So it's like, it's a double whammy. It's a double whammy pun, damn it. I think uh, the VR industry really needs this to be a success because Stray Bombay co-founder Chet Falzek uh, has said that VR is in a would be in a dark place without Facebook money. So he was speaking at Reboot Develop Red, which 
which is a conference in America for a bunch of different games industry professionals from developers to publishers and even games media like journalists. And he said VR would be in a really dark space right now if Facebook financial backing wasn't happening. He worked at Valve as a writer for Half-Life, Portal and Left 4 Dead and he was also a big pusher of Valve's move into VR so he was right at the forefront of that. He makes an interesting point because companies like Facebook who own Oculus in case you didn't know who have been massively instrumental in promoting and funding VR even third party projects and Valve have been doing the same for a long time as well and Facebook have apparently contributed 500 million to VR content which is a serious amount but he's got some interesting quotes about it saying it's a worry that I have right now that a lot of indies are being set up and go from hand to mouth never earning past what they get paid to make the game people aren't making money because they're selling their games they're making money because they're paid to make the games to support platforms or pieces of hardware it's just that those devs always have to be looking forward and asking what happens if this stops tomorrow what do we do and I don't think there's a lot of good answers for that right now for them and he's basically making the point that VR games aren't actually earning money the only reason they're staying afloat is because they're bankrolled by investors like Facebook and the VR isn't self-sustaining enough because the games don't make enough money in terms of actually selling now the big question regarding Half-Life Alex is this will this be the game to kind of break the mold will it actually sell enough to be profitable on its own without the financial backing guaranteed by investors because obviously Valve is putting a lot of money into it is a question of whether it'll earn its development costs back through just sales and then make a profit and then obviously if Half-Life Alex is a success this it's likely to lead to more Half-Life content but also what about other developers will they have the confidence and then financial backing from other people to make other full-scale games but they will actually sell because this market has had this influx from the Half-Life players yeah the, the hope is that the sheer attraction that Half-Life brings to the VR platform is that a lot of people will decide to, to invest in VR the store base on VR will go up people will start buying more VR games because more VR units out there and the whole thing will start to snowball that's the idea then more big game developers will decide well actually it is viable now let's start making big huge experiences specifically for VR to serve those customers but we'll have to wait and see whether it has a huge effect or whether it's just another splash in the in the pond but anyway those are just some of our thoughts on Half-Life Alex and kind of the, the state of VR right now we're pretty excited for what, what it could mean for the VR industry make sure you let us know down below would you rather it was Half-Life 3 because chances are you probably would but don't worry it's, it's definitely coming half-life confirmed <laughs> make sure to leave a like hit subscribe and the bell of course go on over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good game and support the content we create i've been henry he's been gaz we'll see you next time bye for now